Hi, this is Larry Hatch, Horticultural Taxonomist with Cultivar.org. And today's lovely topic is all the varieties of prayer plant uh, in the species Maranta leuconura, which is Latin for white veined. And there's a lot of things called prayer plant, but we're going to limit ourselves just to the one species and look at all the varieties that are known from present to the past. And I'm not going to give you a number. I think the number is probably 20. But some of these things, I think, have been renamed. Um, some go by multiple names, both Latin and cultivar names. And uh, there could be as many as 22. So let's start with that. Anyway, uh, if you want to do some self-study, either now or later, you can go to cultivar.org, click on Hatches Interior Plants, the most complete encyclopedia of houseplant varieties ever created. It took 30 years to develop this, and it's all free. So just go to cultivar.org, click on Hatches Interior Plants, go to the section for Maranta, and you'll have all these pictures and a lot more content than I can fit into this video. Uh, being a taxonomist, I'm going to be a nerd and explain how they're different. I'm not just going to show you a lot of pretty pictures and rant about how bad the plant industry is and um, tell you that you need to use good soil and something called fertilizer um, and that plants actually need light and water. I'm not going to do that. Um, but let's start with the two more or less common varieties and the one at the top, top left, is a variety called Kirkoviana. And that is fairly similar to what we think the species looks like, but the species varies in the wild. So we're not going to consider the species one of the varieties. That would make no sense. But there is no real species typical at this point. So anyway, the Kirkoviana is basically two colored, maybe three uh, and basically, we're going to determine, we're going to term some things. See those little markings on there? Those are called brush strokes. It looks like you took some paint and painted it green, dark green. So we call those brush strokes um, in a lot of the Achillethaceae. And uh, so basically, this is the pallest green, the lightest green, a, a light gray green. And it's got brush strokes that start out almost a maroon color if they get enough light uh, or a dark forest green and they become a medium green that's still darker than the base color so brush strokes kind of reddish if you get some light then dark green then medium green but there's still a bicolored contrast for the most part the cultivar which is maybe the most popular right now it's hard to say uh, the lower right side is erythronura, which is Latin for red vein, well named, and that's got actually four colors going on. The base color is a fairly dark medium green, um, let's call it a medium green, uh, and in the central of the blade is what we call a tree, looks like a miniature tree with branchlets or layers. That central tree is in lime green for the most part. Uh, there's a middle section uh, that is a very dark velvety forest green and all those three greens are overlaid by bright red or violet red veins which gives it its name erythronura. So you get basically the lime green, the medium green, the super dark green, and the red. So it's really a poor colored plant really beautiful plant and uh, the third variety that's commonly grown is this one here and this is an old plate from years ago but the, the living material is just like this um, and this may be what the species looks like in the wild again some people think it's more like Kirkobiana this is the variety Masangiana and it's very different than the others. First of all, it does have a big central tree. 
but it's a wide one and it's more silver it's not really lime green it's more of a silver green greenish silver greenish white um, it does have the medium green base color and it does have that dark velvety green central zone but 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 the veins that overlay it are not red like erythro neuro they are whitish to whitish green to silvery green they're never red pigmented so even if the even if the leaf is pigmented red on the back those veins are always white so some people used to call this um, leuconura variety leuconura but it's actually a selected clone from at least a century and a half ago called Masangiana. Uh, now these things sport a lot and mutate. So somebody had the, the kind of the basic Kirkovian. Remember that's the one that's light green and dark green only with no vein colors. And they got a mutation of it uh, that had variegation. And that variety is called Kim. It's called lots of things. Variegated Kim. But Kim is the oldest name. And you can see that here. Uh, this plant obviously gets some sun because those brush strokes do start out kind of maroon and then fade to dark green shades. But what's really interesting is when that creamy yellowy chimera overlaps those brush strokes, you get these little pink marks. So, so the pigment uh, is very shallow, very, very shallow on the surface. And uh, what a chimera overlaps with those maroon brush strokes you get these beautiful dusky pink colors kind of interesting the problem with this plant is it the chimera is kind of small and um, it, it reverts a lot and it, it's not a really bold variegated plant so not everybody really cares for it our next variety is a fairly recent one uh, it's called lemon lime and it's it's somewhat similar to the erythro nora and the masangiana in that it has uh, distinctly cup, uh, colored veins and it, you notice these veins come out in an arc shape you know they curve in almost like a fish bone pattern or herring bone pattern uh, taxonomists would call those arcuate or arc shaped or arcing um, but in the case of lemon lime that tree in the center is bright yellowish lime it's it's not it's not like the others which is kind of a dusky muted lime it's usually in the newest growth a bright lime green and the veins are bright brighter and they contrast more they're they're a bright yellow uh, and it's got that big dark velvety forest green center as well um but if you give this a lot of light and it stays vigorous, it'll be the most yellow of the cultivars. Another one that's highly sought after um, is uh, called Silver Band. And that's a mutation that kind of gets rid of the brush brooks for the most part. And the central tree is a huge leaf-like shape in silver or silvery green. And the veins are also silver. So this one's got silver all over the place. Uh, looks a lot like a Calathea. But this one is a really good introduction where the silver tree in the center is maximized. It's not green. And those veins just really stick out. Uh, one thing we do at cultivar.org is we look at history of cultivars. Because, you know, you can't know the present and the past. You can't know the present and the future without knowing about the past. And um, you need to know the whole history of these things. And there have been many cultivars in this species in the past, which we think are lost, or they might have been renamed, or something. Or, or they're probably sitting in some old, you know, botanical garden in Yugoslavia or Germany or Australia somewhere, and, and maybe we'll find them someday, you know. Uh, we just somebody just has to know what they are supposed to look like even if they might not have that same name so one of these really old varieties is called fascinator and we don't really have anything like it today it's got the red veins like erythronura but the central tree 
is actually made up of silver brush strokes and these kind of oblong bulbs. Um, so it's different, and we do not have this Friday day. By the way, if you have seen anything exactly like this, uh, you might have discovered a lost cultivar. So uh, let's let's sort of look at that um, and uh, see if we can find something like that. It's probably around somewhere, uh, but this is from a very old magazine, um, and we dug this up. Another cultivar that is around today is called Maricela, or some people call it Marcella, but it is M-A-R-I-S-E-L-A, -E and uh, it's, it's, it reminds you a little of the lemon lime, except it doesn't have the big tree in the center. It's got a very narrow midrib. So basically, what it's about is venation in a light, contrasting creamy yellow, and that big dark velvety forest green center is expanded to cover almost the entire blade uh, so you get more contrast than you do if it's just dark in the center and uh, that's a really good that's a really good selection and uh, the the narrow midrib is pretty distinct and you can see that some of the veins it seems like almost every other vein that comes off the midrib on some leaves uh, is shorter so it's got an alternating long and short vein. Some of the some of the veins are a little stubby looking. And that kind of is interesting as well. Uh, going back to some of the old cultivars, uh, here's one called Florentina, and um, we only have it in black and white. That's all we know about it. Uh, we don't know what the vein color is, but we can surmise that the base color is green. That darker central color is probably dark velvety forest green. And like Fascinator, it seems to have light, bulbous brush strokes. Um, they, they're a different shape than Fascinator. Um, and we can only guess that they're either silver or light green since it contrasts. So um, that's that. But we did find an old reference to it. This came from M.M. Linden, who was one of the first people to introduce house plant cultivars in these species from um, South and Central America. And um, this Florentina is described as dwarf with broad olive green leaves, midrib, and veins of a lighter shade. So we can sort of assume they're not red. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's probably mostly dark greens and light greens uh, from what we've got. And another lost variety that he introduced is this one called Metallica. Again, this comes from an old horticultural journal. Um, wide leaves, conspicuous silver ribs, central portion light green, running to a broadly bronzy green band towards the margins. That's something we don't have today. We don't really have anything metallic in the bronze look. So that would be another one to look out for in some old garden somewhere. Uh, Linden worked out of England, so hey, maybe, maybe some uh, some plants have stuck around uh, these 150 years or so. Never know. And a, a third one from Linden is called a Trata, and it's velvety green with a light green midrib and veins. Uh, that's another one we don't have. And wouldn't it be great to find some of these? Um, and here's another listing from an old, old, old thing uh, mentioning um, that Masangiana was shown in 1894 and Atrata was also a handsome one. And we at Colorbar.org uh, look for this kind of uh, old horticultural information to, um, you know, secure our research and to make it rounded out. Uh, so let's let's look at a couple more. Uh, I don't have slides for these, but there are some old varieties and new varieties that uh, are worth mentioning. There's an old one um, called Elbow Lineata, and that one, Elbow Lineata basically means white lines, so we're guessing it probably had white veins. Uh, that one is lost. Um, it may be the same as Calathea ornata. 
So it may have been put in Maranta Lucanura by accident, but um, the general consensus is that it was probably a white veined Lucanura type. And um, uh, that's that. Oh, and by the way, the variety Kim, I misspoke. It should be called Beauty Kim. Beauty Kim, not, not Kim. The, the original name was Beauty Kim and not Kim, so that's my mistake. And let's correct that and get that right. Um, that, that originated by Brian Gold out of Centerville, Utah, as a sport of Kirkoviana uh, that he saw in Guatemala in 1997. And uh, it was patented under U.S. Patent 11962. And that U.S. Patent is a legal document uh, which establishes the name Beauty Kim as the correct name. Uh, there's another cultivar, and I didn't want to steal an image, but it's from Exotic Angel, a.k.a. Costa Farms, called Black Prayer. Uh, it kind of looks like Masangiana. Uh, it's got a, it's got silver white with very dark blackish green zones and paler whitish veins. Seems to be more silver than the typical Leuconura type material. Or Masangiana material, uh, so it may be their tissue culture selection. I have not found one. I, I frequent all the stores, including the box stores where Exotic Angel stuff is sold, and I've never seen it. Maybe some of you have. I know it was listed on their website as early as 2018. Uh, so Black Prayer is is probably worth looking at too. Uh, there is another cultivar that's lost. It's called Devosiana, D-E-V-O-S-I-A-N-A. -A. And that showed up on the Q hand list of tender mono monocotyledons in 1897, along with some of the other varieties. Uh, it's just a name to us, but we want to be complete in our history as much as possible, and, um, and so on. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think if we've forgotten any others. There is an older cultivar name called Fulgida, F-U-L-G-I-D-A. If you ever run into that, let somebody know because that, that's a missing cultivar also. And um, so on. Let's get back to the Kirkoviana, you know, which is the, the two-tone green one with the dark green brush strokes. Uh, we tracked that down. We are trying to figure that out. And... Um, it was first reported in the Gardener's Chronicle of 1885, belonging to um, a nurseryman named M. David near Versailles, France. And it was brought to San Francisco as early as 1895 as Calathea Kirkoviana. And um, it was later determined that it belongs to this species, Maranta. Um, and uh, the folks at Kew Gardens um, quickly figured that out. Uh, of the Kirkoviana types, uh, there is a dwarf or smaller form that's more compact with a smaller leaf, and that's called Kirkoviana minima. You may see that around. I do not have a picture of that, and, but it is worth noting. Um, some people do consider the, quote, species form or white vein form to be a cultivar, Leuconura. Um, I do I'm not too comfortable with that. In in my encyclopedia, we are um, we are uh, going with that. A lot of taxonomists consider it to be a synonym of Bassangiana, since it does have white veins. Um, but that's open to debate, and that's why um, maybe we don't know how many cultivars there are quite yet, since we haven't made all of those decisions. Uh, there is another cultivar called Repens, R-E-P-E-N-S, and that appears to be a miniature version of Krakoviana, perhaps like Krakoviana Minima, and it's a low spreader. Again, that may be lost as well. Uh, another cultivar that we think might be lost is called Smaragina, which I think means emerald, uh, S-M-A-R-A-G-I-N-A. -A. It's a lost name. Um, so it, it apparently is greenish, and so on. Uh, there are other names in the species, like tricolor, but those are actually plants that belong in another another genus. Um, 
So anyway, if you find some of these old lost cultivars, please let us know if you've seen anything that looks like them. And that's why I wanted to put these old documents in there. Because people are finding these old lost heirloom cultivars in old conservatories, private collections, botanical gardens. And they're saying, that's something different. And like I say, some of these are different enough. We could probably match it up with a, with a name. Uh, so be you know if you're a detective and you like these plants, uh, let somebody know. Let us know. Let a local authority know, and maybe they can propagate it. Um, and uh, again, please go to Hatches Interior Plants. Just click cultivar.org. www.cultivar.org. Hatches Plants, and then go to the Maranta section or whatever section you like, and you'll find more cultivars than any other houseplant reference for almost everything you look at. Thanks for your time.